All right, welcome everyone to the New York Drone Film Festival Masterclass on Velocidrone track building. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through how to create your very own racetrack in the Velocidrone simulator, taking you step by step through all the little tricks and tips to make sure that your track is nice and flowy, but also works as expected. We're going to get right into it by creating a brand new track on the environment of your choice. So the way we're gonna do that is, we're gonna hop into Lost Drone Simulator, obviously. We're gonna go ahead and open up the track editor here. And from here, we are gonna click on the Create New Track button down here in the bottom right. And then from this option, we have tons of different environments that we can have access to to build our, our new racetrack. Some of these environments are going to be a little bit heavier on the graphics card and on the CPU, so just keep that in mind if you're making an event for um, you know people who aren't hardcore gamers, might not have a, a gaming computer, you might want to run it on empty scene day or empty poly world. Um, football stadium is pretty, pretty easy on the computer, future hangar empty. Um, NEC Birmingham is another good option. The heavier scenes are going to be the ones like Bando, uh, the DR1 content like Castle Schnesnick, Coastal. Those environments are a little bit heavier, but they are you know a lot more exciting, and they're going to be a little bit easier for a new track designer to get in there and, and build a track because there's a lot, a lot of natural elements and already elements installed in the environment to kind of work around. But today we're going to start off with a blank slate. <laughs> for me, that's the most challenging way to build a track so we're gonna go ahead and um, try to walk you guys through that so we're gonna just go straight to empty scene day actually you know what? we'll do dynamic weather so dynamic weather is empty scene day but with um, the ability to change the weather like the sky the clouds time of day all that good stuff so we're gonna walk you through some keyboard shortcuts uh, as well so we got the keyboard cam on for you guys and I'll call out what I'm hitting when I'm hitting it um, as we get into this. So first things first, to navigate around, I use the arrow keys and I also use the right click on the mouse. So I'm gonna right click on the mouse, hold it down and move my mouse left to right. That's gonna let me move around and look up, down, anywhere, anywhere you want, 360 degrees. So I'm gonna hold right on the uh, keyboard and then I'm gonna kind of rotate my mouse around and then I'm gonna hit forward to get down to. So let's put a gate down here. <coughs> and I'm gonna hit back on the on the arrow keys, and that's gonna let me lift up. And now I'm holding down on right right mouse mouse <laughs> excuse me mouse button and pulling it down. Now we're gonna hit forward on the keyboard, and I'm gonna hit right click on the mouse, and then I'm gonna kind of slowly drag it up, and that's gonna kind of get us down to this to this piece here. And then to, um, let's say we're down below the item and we need to kind of go up vertically. I'm gonna hold down my middle mouse button and I'm gonna drag up. So see that, we can move now we can move around like this with the middle mouse button, click down. So right click, rotate, middle mouse, kind of move up and down, arrows, kind of navigate forward, back, left, right, okay. That's one of those things where you just kind of got to play, get used to the uh, the navigation. Once you do, that can really save you a lot of time with the track design. So really practice moving around and navigating your environment quickly. First thing we need to get the track started is a, uh, a, a start grid. <laughs> we need somewhere for the drones to launch from. There's two start grid options. I like to use this one, the stock uh, flat grid. You can also use this grid here. This one's gonna start the drones a little bit higher up in the air. Um, so it's up to you. These look kind of cooler for sure. But uh, we're gonna use the stock the stock one. So basically just put it down anywhere because this is an empty field. Um, if you want, you can kind of put it in the middle of the field. So I'm gonna hit W on the keyboard. That's gonna bring the uh, movement, object movement uh, prompts here. And I'm gonna hover over this red one. That's gonna be the horizontal axis. When it turns yellow, that means I can click it. And then I'm just gonna drag it 
with the mouse. So see that? If I want to move it on the um, on the X axis, so sorry, this is Y axis. This is X. I'll just hover over the blue one, and then I can move it on the X. And then Z is going to be this one here. I might have those wrong, but <laughs> um, you get the you get the idea here with the movement. So let's see. And also, what you can do is if you hover over this the box itself, uh, you can kind of move it around um, in that way. But I, I never use that. I don't like to do that. I like to kind of keep it on its planes here. All right, so that's the start grid. First, first thing you need to do. <coughs> Not necessarily the first, but it's a good idea to put the start grid down first so you have an, uh, an idea of which way the track is going to start and go. Um, <clears throat> so let's put some gates down. So we're going to navigate to the menu that says gates here on the top right. And there's a ton of options in here for you guys to uh, select from. You can go with the traditional gate style. These are the old school Velocity Run gates from like when the sim first launched. Um, we have these, which are going to be more of your like traditional kind of um, tent pole gates, similar to this one. It's got the guide wires on it. Um, then we get into like the multi GP style gates. So there's going to be two options for multi GP gates. There's the actual five by five, and then there's the scaled up version here. <clears throat> now. If you build a track with multi-GP gates, <laughs> do not use these 5x5s. Five five. It's going to be really, 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 really tight and hard. For whatever reason on the sim, gates that are 5x5 five five do not translate to um, to real life feeling. So it's, if you build a track with 5x5s, five five, it's going to be insanely hard and it's not going to feel like the real thing. Um, I like to use about eight by eight in the sim for my multi GP gates. All right, so um, let's do something a little more exciting with the gate style. That's the multi GP gates there. <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, let's use some inflatables. Inflatables are always look great on the track. So I like these kind of wing gates here. All right, so even with these gates, I like to stretch them out just a little bit. So I'm going to show you how we scale items right here. So the scale hotkey is R on the keyboard. And then you're going to see how the uh, scaling uh, tool is in the middle of the gate. What I can do is I can hit P on the keyboard. And what's that? That's going to allow me to do is scale this from the ground up. So watch this. See how it stays. See so how the base is staying on the ground? Let's bring that back down. If I hit P again, that's going to put it back to the uh, the center of the item. Now when I scale it, it's going to scale from the middle out. Okay, so we don't want that. So I'm going to control Z. <coughs> so this is a very useful tool, the P hotkey. Um, so what you can do to scale an item universally, scale it in all directions, is hold shift. And you guys see that box pop up here? Here, let's see if I can get close. See this little box here? So when, when that turns yellow, when you hover over that, you can hold in a corner and then drag. So hold your click, left click, and then drag. See how we can just keep stretching this out indefinitely. And it won't go below the ground. Very nice. It's obviously way too big, so we're going to control Z that. Still too big. Okay. So I'm going to put another one down just so I have the scaling right. And then I'm going to hold shift, left click. OK. Now, obviously, you probably don't want to gate right on the start line, right? So we're going to hit W, hover over the right, or sorry, the red arrow. And then we're going to drag this gate out just a little bit. OK. There we go. There's our first gate. Good job, guys. All right, so now this is where it gets a little tricky. You got to figure out what kind of flow you want, what kind of track layout you want. Um, <clears throat> something that I like to do is start to put down some some objects, like some rocks or some trees. So we're gonna go, we'll go over here to trees. 
so there's two options for trees. There's the fast foliage here. The fast foliage is gonna be easier on the graphics card and the CPU. These trees are a lot higher detailed, so they're gonna obviously take up more computing power. So look at this tree. Very nice looking, right? You can see the details. Let's get a better example here. So this tree's got a lot more details, this one on the left than this one on the right. You, you can see it when you go in and, and fly. I'll show you guys in a, in a minute, but um, just be use these these trees a little more sparingly, the uh, the, the trees uh, category, because they're gonna definitely eat up a little more processing power. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to move two items, because I wanna move this a little bit farther away from the star grid, or we could just move the star grid back. That's probably the smarter way to do it. So I'm gonna move the, slide the star grid back with the W key. Left click on the mouse, hold that. All right. So what I wanna do here is kinda have like a U-turn around the tree as like the first obstacle. So I could go back to the gate section and find another one of these gates and put it down, right? But the scaling is going to be off, so we want to keep the track consistent, right? So instead of me trying to go in and figure out how, you know, uh, does that look right? Is that scaling good? What I can do is click on this gate that we already created and scaled, hold C, and then click anywhere that I want to place it. Another option is to highlight the gate that you want to duplicate and hit the clone button up here on the top uh, left mid of the screen. So I'm going to hit clone. W, that's going to give me the move, movement arrows, and you see that? So we can just keep cloning these gates, really. Clone, drag, all right, so that's how you're going to get your gates consistently sized on the track. <clears throat> all right, so now we're going to get into the rotation tool. So you guys have the movement tool down. Star grid, you've got the gate scaling and cloning and copying. So we have a gate copied, but it's facing the wrong direction. You guys see this little disc here? Okay, that is the respawn point of the gate. That's also indicates the direction that you have to fly through the gate. These gates are not bi-directional. You have to fly through them in a specific direction to trigger the checkpoint and um, move on to the next gate. So Whichever side of the gate this disc is on, that's going to be the opposite way um, that the drone is going to enter. So the drone is going to enter from this side, you guys can see my mouse, and exit out towards the disc. So we need to rotate this gate 180 degrees. So next hotkey I'm going to teach you is the E hotkey. That's going to bring up the rotation tool. Now you want to be careful with this tool, this one can be a little finicky. So <clears throat> You have the yellow, the, sorry, the green. That's going to rotate it on the X. You have the blue. That is going to rotate it vertically there. And then you have the uh, red that's going to rotate it kind of horizontally there. All right. So, what you want to do when you're rotating stuff, at least what I like to do, is Rotate it in 15 degree increments. So how we're going to do that is we're going to hold control and then we're going to hover over that green line until it turns yellow. And then we're going to dra start dragging the mouse. Left click on it and drag the mouse. You see how that rotates in nice 15 degree increments? That's just going to help keep your track nice and aligned and, and looking clean, not, not, you know, not sloppy and off center. Um, <clears throat> Sometimes you're gonna need to not use control to like get it, you know, just right. But for now, it's just always nice to just keep everything kind of um, aligned, nice and clean. All right, so we've got a U-turn around that tree, um, and we've got our star grid. <coughs> so maybe we put a hurdle here. How about that? So we're gonna come around the tree. <coughs> And then we'll have a little barrier here. So we'll go into the barrier section. Got a bunch of options here. We've got this inflatable barrier, game of drones. <clears throat> Actually, 
You know what? These aren't in production yet, so we'll save those for another master class. Um, so we have these, you know, we could put a stone wall up if we want to go with that kind of theme of the track. Kind of like a country, uh, country farm or something, or like a castle even. Um, but we'll keep it, we'll keep it a little more standard for this tutorial. So we're going to take this Team Black Sheep Barrier. All right, we're going <laughs> to left click on it and then put it on the map, right? And then we're going to take a rotational tool, that's E, hold control, hover over the green, click on it, and then start dragging your mouse till it's uh, perpendicular to this gate here. That'll look good. Okay. So now we need to move it. We're going to hit W, like so. And then what I think I'm going to do is make this launch area a little bit of a channel that you fly through. So I'm going to clone this Team Black Sheep barrier. All right, so we'll clone it. And cloning it here will make sure that it stays lined up with the other barrier. So I'm going to hold Control. So Control you can use for the rotational tool also for movement so it's gonna move it kind of snap it to a grid see that all right so it's nice and centered now all right I want the team black sheep logo on the other side here so what are we gonna do we're gonna hit the rotational tool E hold control and then rotate it 180 easy right okay so we've got our gate here we might need to move this gate back just a little bit that's gonna be so I'm at the W key now you see how the um, tool is um, kind of not really centered so let's see um, there we go okay so then we're gonna have the P key to get it centered that's what I was trying to do. Okay, so so sometimes when you select a gate, it's gonna be um, these arrows aren't gonna be lined up. I'll show you. I'll show you right here what I mean. So now see how it's lined up. The blue is kind of going along the gate line. Uh, the yellow, the green, sorry, is going up up with the gate line. So that's G and L. So see this one? How it's not gonna let us move it in the direction of the gate. And that does. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna to want to play with those keys sometimes, um, depending on you know wh how how the objects rotate and how you want to move it. So that's G and L. I usually like to keep it on L. Um, it just makes moving stuff a little bit easier. All right. So we got that gate move. We got our hurdles. <coughs> now we might need to put. We need to make these a little bit taller, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna select both of them at once. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this first one. I'm gonna hold control, and then I'm gonna click on the second one. And that's gonna allow us to scale both of them at the same time. So I'm gonna hit the R hotkey, that's the scaling key. And then I'm gonna hit P, and that's gonna scale these from the ground up. All right, because we don't want the barrier going underground okay that looks pretty good let's make sure it's not too high so right now to move around the map I'm just using the uh, middle mouse button and right click that's kind of and then I use the scroll wheel to zoom in so that's kind of instead of using the arrows to zoom the scroll wheel um, I like to just use the mouse most of the time um, sometimes I'll use the arrow keys to zoom in really fast you know but um, right now I'm just using the mouse to navigate around if you're wondering so middle mouse button clicked and then I'm going to release that right click and then scroll wheel zoom all right if you want to focus on an item you can highlight it and hit F and that'll bring you in close to it so let's say you have a gate like way over here you can get to it really fast it's kind of cool right to delete an item just hit D probably wondering how I'm doing that just hit D on the keyboard that's going to delete an item so let's get back over there. F. All right, cool. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Now we're going to come over this hurdle. Barrier thingy. 
And why don't we go into a little dive gate here? So go to the gates. And now we're gonna talk about the invisible checkpoints, okay? So we're gonna take a dive gate. <laughs> Let's see. We'll take this inflatable dive gate. Doesn't really match the color of the uh, theme of the track, but that's okay. I'm gonna take hit the P to get the uh, tool centered. I'm gonna hold Shift to scale it uniformly. Hover over the spot white box and then drag. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. And then I'm also gonna bring it down just a touch. So I'm gonna actually scale it down, um, kind of shrink it vertically. So I'm gonna hit R and then just drag this yellow. Okay, so let's say you're trying to get it, your gate to kind of sit flush on the ground. What you can do is just bring it up, hit the period key, and then it's gonna go down until it hits an object, which is the ground in this case. All right, so let's see. Come up, and then we're gonna dive down through this gate, that'll work. All right, so now we need a checkpoint inside of this gate. This gate, like a lot of objects on here, do not have um, a gate that you fly, a, a checkpoint. So let's see, let's find another example of a non-checkpointed gate. A lot of these guys don't have checkpoints, right? Because uh, Velocity wants you to have the option to fly through any direction that you want on these. With a gate like this, it's a little more clear cut. With this though, it could be a ladder could be a split S, so um, you know it's it's open to the track designer. Um, let's see, yeah, it's pretty much just the inflatables, like stuff like this. No checkpoints inside of them. So what we need to do is go over to invisible, right? And these are our invisible checkpoints. So they're gonna, they're going to show up on the map when you're in the editor, but when you're actually flying around, you won't see any of this gray outline here. So you could put an invisible gate here and you wouldn't see the gray, you would just see a checkpoint. All right, so we need to make this a dive gate, right? So we got this che uh, invisible checkpoint here. Now, the way you fly through a dive gate is obviously you go up and then down through the top. So we want this puck here. That's where the, the direction that the drone's gonna be flying through to be facing down towards the ground, right? So I'm gonna hit P to get my tool down flush with the bottom here and then I'm going to E that's the rotational tool I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to click on the uh, the green the green line here and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees to the right okay pretty cool right and then what we're going to do is hit W and we're going to bring the bottom of this gate just close to the edge of the dive gate bring it down a little bit you don't have to be perfect on this. And then I'm going to R to scale it. So watch this. So now that I have it P on the uh, bottom of the gate, we're going to drag the blue up until it goes through the gate and then the green out until it goes through the gate. So now what you can do is fly through this uh, dive gate and it'll check off the checkpoint. What you don't want to do is have this checkpoint here be kind of like, you know, not fully covering the gate because someone could potentially fly through this gap here and not trigger the checkpoint. You don't want it like up high, you know, so if someone takes it really tight, they don't trigger the checkpoint. You want it right inside of this thing. All right. So that's that. So we got dive gate. <clears throat> Let's just enter into another gate. So I'm gonna take this gate, clone it, W key, control, and then left click, and then we're gonna drag it. All right. So let's see, let's put another tree down somewhere here. And then we're gonna come, let's, uh, let's do a little ladder. So we'll go to the gates. Scroll down here. We'll just do a double ladder. 
So I'm going to put this double ladder right next to this uh, ground gate here and just kind of check out the scaling by putting them next to each other. So see how the ground gates are a little bit bigger already? So I'm going to scale this di uh, ladder gate up. R, shift, white box till it's yellow, highlight it, left click. All right, so we want it to be about the same kind of opening. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, W to move. And then, um, you know what? We might make this a little split S action here. Let's see, so if we come around here, you know, we'll come around to the bottom. So I'm gonna take an invisible checkpoint. Right, the box one. And then we're gonna put it underneath here in the bottom section. Click on it, E, control to rotate it. And then W to align it with the gate. And then R to scale it. That's kind of the process there. All right, so now we have dive gate, gate. And then a left turn sweeper. We'll make this into like a sweeper here. So why don't we put a flag down here? So the flag's gonna be found under gates as well. So we'll go down to the bottom. We'll keep the theme the same using this uh, kind of group of gates here. We'll take this pylon here and we'll just put it out here. We'll rotate it 90 degrees. <laughs> okay, so pilots will have to fly around it this way. And then maybe they come into another pylon. So I'm just gonna hold C and copy this one. Rotate it 90. So they come around. It's a little small. Um. <clears throat> and then maybe that hits them into a sweeper. So we're going to take a bunch of these gates here. Copy the first one. E to rotate. The green one. What you don't want to do is like take the outside see how it's rotating all weird you want to make sure that you're on that green one here <clears throat> this one here not the outside one sometimes you'll do that on accident right so the green one <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is make a little sweeper so I'm just going to clone one pull it out Rotated it a couple times. We'll say three times on the control rotate. So that's 45 degrees Remember that's 15 degree increments All right, so we're gonna take one more rotate it three times So now we're 90 degrees from the original And then for like sweepers and stuff I like to get the overhead view And stuff like this, uh, like a sweeper, you just need to get in there and test fly and make sure it flows nicely. Um, so we'll show you guys how to do that in a second. So what we're going to do is come around this tree, a little chicane here, and then through a sweeper. And then we need to figure out how to get back up to this top portion of the gate here. So we could do something a little tricky here. We could take this dive gate. So I'm just going to highlight this. Hit P because I want it to be centered. And then I'm going to hold C and just copy it over here. And then we're going to rotate both items at the same time. Remember, there's an invisible gate inside of there. Now, if I had P selected, or if I had P on the other, other side, it's going to start rotating stuff a little bit weird. So when you're rotating items, <clears throat> make sure when you want P to be centered on the items right like that. Okay? See, that's right in the middle. This is when you do have multiple items selected, okay? Um, so let's see, so we're gonna come into the sweeper and then this will be like a, a weird corkscrew kind of power loop. Here, I'm gonna move this gate over. Just 
a little bit. Okay. Now let's bring this down just a touch. Remember we have a gate inside here and we need to rotate this 180. So I'm gonna E, hover over the blue, control, rotate. So now it's gonna be an up gate, right? Let's see how the puck is facing up. So now we have an up gate instead of a dive gate. And then I'm gonna take this invisible gate here. I'm gonna clone it and just drag it up to the top part and rotate at 180. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys how to test fly your track. When you get to about half, you know, quarter way, halfway through, and you're starting to get some technical elements, you wanna test the track, make sure it's not too hard, make sure everything works. So what we're gonna do is hit F9 on the keyboard. F9. It's gonna ask you to enter a track name down in the bottom right. So we'll call this NYDFF. Okay. And then that's gonna take you into flight mode. All right, so this is a really, really handy feature. I use this quite a lot when I'm testing my tracks. That's how you make sure your tracks fly nice. All right, so we're gonna hit the uh, flag button here, start race, and now we can test our, our track. So remember we got this first gate here. Got the little hurdle. Dive gate. And then we come in here to the slalom into the sweeper. And I'm actually flying the uh, the combat drone right now. So let me hop out and uh, grab a five inch. So the way the track editor works is whatever drone you previously were racing with or flying with, um, it's gonna put you into that drone uh, when you're in the track editor. So go, out, go ahead and back out and uh, just go into single player and see how it's on the the combat quad, and then just select um, your favorite drone. I'm gonna do the spec quad here. So just select that, and then we'll go back into the track editor here. <clears throat> track editor, so th this is a good, good time to show you guys how to edit a track that you've previously worked on. So you're gonna have all your tracks listed here that you've either downloaded or built yourself. Um, so I'm gonna go to dynamic weather. That's where we built the track, NYDFF, and I'm gonna go to edit. From here, you can also rename the track. Um, you can delete it, you can upload it to the server so your friends can download it, or you can export it to your documents folder and send it to someone personally. Um, it'll just export a text file and you can send that to them that way if you don't want it kind of going out to the public for like a private event. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and edit this one. All right, so let's go back and test fly this with the spec quad now. Should be a little bit more realistic. <coughs> faster okay dive gate chicane sweeper All right, that's kind of fun so when I have a really tough element on the track I'll try to fly it a few times and uh, just see if there's you know try to envision what ways pilots are gonna try to hit it All right that's probably gonna be the most common way pilots are gonna eventually start hitting it is a little the little kink there. Um, what we could do is like that as well. That's, that's gonna be the easier line. Um, this might be the fastest line here, like that. So just kind of try to put, you know, think about different ways you can hit objects and, um, you know, you might need to make tweaks because it might be a little, just, you know, an awkward line. There might not be a, a really flowy line. There's a couple challenging lines here, but let's see. I mean, the flowy line is gonna be like that, you know, kind of like that. So maybe we can force that. So if we come here, right? So let's think about maybe forcing a specific way to do it. So if we come here, something like that. So let's try to play with this a little bit. Or we can come around back here. So sweeper.
And I'll, I'll spend quite a bit of time on objects like this just to make sure it's like something kind of new and fun. Something to kind of separate the track from the others. Um, so let's see, what do we like? Could put a flag up there, that's something kind of different. So we come under, put a pile on here that we have to fly around. Kinda interesting. Ooh, okay. Oh crap, so you guys, sometimes you gotta kinda try to remember how you did something. Okay, so we'll do that. Come around the back side. Go up, pylon, pylon, okay. Gotta try to remember that. <laughs> so we're gonna go to that gate here. So we come around the back. So from this gate here, gate number 10, you see the gate order down there? We're gonna fly through this backside area, so we're gonna take an invisible gate. That's gonna be gate 11. So we're gonna have to go down here into the gate order and make it gate 11 by clicking these little arrows here. And then we're gonna rotate it 180. Hit P to make it on the ground, scale it up. All right, that's 11. We're gonna clone this one. Clone, E, rotate, control. W, left click, left click. All right. So we come here. <clears throat> so this is gonna be, so this is gate 11, 12, 13 we don't need anymore. So I'm just gonna, yeah, we don't need that. So I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna clone this dive gate. Let's see how this looks. Hmm. Okay, we're just gonna take these pylons here. So I'm gonna click it. C, and then we're just gonna rotate it. And then what we can do is try to sink it down inside of this gate to make it look a little cleaner, but I don't think it's gonna work too well. Could try that. All right, we're gonna clone that one and we're gonna move it across here. And then we're just gonna rotate it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you don't want these spawn points being inside of a gate. So I'll show you what'll happen here. So we see how that's inside of the gate. Watch this. track here so we can come around the back side okay all right so watch this so I crash let's say I fly through that gate and I crash so it's gonna respawn me inside of that one wasn't that bad actually that was a bad example so let me try to show you guys again So I'm gonna move this gate up, to make, turn this into an up gate actually. All right, so we got gate 10. Let's make sure the order is right now. 11, 12, is that gonna work? Yeah, 13, 14, 15, okay. So let me show you guys an example of um, what not to do with your gates is to like sink them in the ground like this. See how the checkpoint is underneath the ground now? So watch what happens here when we crash at that gate. Ready to raise. <sighs> those are those points are where you're gonna spawn. So let's say you crash at that gate. 
All right. Um, that's where the drone's gonna respawn. Okay, so watch. Let's see, this gate is. I crash after that gate. Let's say. I'm under the mess. <laughs> puts me under the map. So sometimes uh, it'll put you on the map. Sometimes it'll spin you out all crazy. Luckily for this one, you're able to get out of that. How's that? How's that look? Seven point three four. Hmm. Not crazy about it. Not the worst though. Okay, we'll, ro we'll roll with it for now. So let's put this gate back up on the ground. So remember how we do that? We're gonna hit the period key. It's gonna put it right on the ground level. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm just not crazy about the way this looks right now, but you know we can come in, come back in a little bit, and maybe make it look a little better. Let's just get the flow down. So we come out of here, and let's just take another gate here, and we'll have a nice straightaway, a little breather after that section. Maybe we'll have some more trees, like a tree line straightaway, to kind of break up the visuals a little bit. Look at that tree, that beautiful tree. All right, so we'll take this gate, we're gonna clone it, and we'll just make a nice straight over here. And then how about we make a, a left turn. So we'll take our pylon. And th this, is a, this is just a trick for, uh, for getting the scaling right, but also just for speeding up your build time. So instead of Going up here and trying to find the pylon, right? Scrolling down, whatever that, you know, see how long, how long it takes? I just find one that I already have on the map, highlight it, and then hit C, and then click. Save you guys a lot of time on that one. Okay, so we're gonna come around this tree. And then maybe we have a gate, one of these gates here, kind of flying through the trees. So it's a little, a little bit of a canopy. That'll be fun. Let's just make sure it's not in the way of this gate here. Just bring it out a little bit. Okay, that looks cool. So we need to put an invisible checkpoint in this gate, don't forget. So what we can do is, we could take the one that's in here, but you see how I can't really highlight it because it's inside of the gate? What you'd have to do is zoom in like this and then click it. So just keep that in mind that when you, when you try to click on a gate and you can't get it, it's because there's another object that the sim thinks you're trying to highlight. So we'll grab that gate. And then C, we're gonna have to rotate it. So we're gonna get the E, control, rotate. Okay, let's try this section out now. F9, hotkey for starting a race is gonna be A. Dive gate, chicane, oh geez. Chicane, sweeper, up gate. This little breather section here. All right, all right, we're getting there. It's starting to look like a racetrack. Dive gate. Chicane sweeper. Up. Little, I don't even know what we're gonna call that one yet. Cool, okay. Um, most of my tracks I like to go for about uh, sub 30 second laps. Somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds is good, a good time to shoot for. Um, so why don't we start talking about the weather here for this uh, environment. This is a really cool feature. So right now we got some clouds in the sky. The sun's at about 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, depending on what time of year it is. So we'll click on the weather here. And we can change the time of day. See how that rotates the sun 
Ooh, do night. Moon pops up. We could do early morning. Uh, some dawn playing. Or we could do some golden hour, kind of sunset. Right? What you can also do is progress time, so the time of day will change throughout the race, which is kind of cool. Um, just be careful of that. Make sure you have some like LEDs on the track so that uh, pilots can see when it becomes nighttime. We can change the month, right? So that the sun's gonna be kind of rotating around the sky. Change the latitude. So you can really get this dialed into exactly where you, uh, where you live, which is really cool. You know, let's say you live in the Arctic. <laughs> let's see. The sun just kind of rotates horizontally. It's kind of trippy. Um, yeah, so that you can play around with that. It's really fun. You can really uh, give a nice, unique element and, and uh, style to your tracks. You can also add some fog. Fog can get a little crazy. Um, and you can add some cloud coverage if it's too, too sunny. All right, so that's the weather. Um, so let's finish up this little last section here. We gotta somehow get back to this start finish gate, right? So we're coming through this up gate. Let's just put a gate here. We'll rotate it 90. And then we'll come through there. Let me grab another pylon. And we'll just make a left turn. Sorry, right turn around that. Put another gate over here. <clears throat> and then we need to get to the start finish line. So let's put, maybe we'll have a ladder. And scale it up just a touch. Come around the back of this. So we need the uh, invisible gates. All right, so we're gonna put a couple of these in here. Just scale them up a little bit. So we're gonna come around the back ladder. One, two, and then we'll make this top one like a kind of reverse split us there. And then maybe we'll come into a dive gate. So I'm gonna take this dive gate, I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna clone it. And then we'll just bring it over here. So that'll be our finish kind of line. So we'll come from this top of the uh, ladder into the dive. Okay. So um, one thing that really can make your tracks stand out and make them feel a little bit more official is putting some cones down. So what you could do is, <laughs> don't recommend it, uh, is put them down individually. Um, just by holding C and kind of just clicking. Don't do that. I'm going to show you guys the spline tool that's going to save you a lot of time. And it's going to make your tracks look really nice. So we're going to click the spline here. And we're going to start clicking on the ground. So that's going to be a node, we call those. So we're going to move around. And we're going to put another node inside of this gate here. All right, and then where do we go after that? We go to, let's see. Oh yeah, over here. Gotta remember the tracks, we'll put one there, there, there. This will make a lot more sense once I put the cones down, why I'm kind of putting multiple nodes down. So to exit out of the spline, you just double right click. That's what I did right there, I just double right click. Um, and then to highlight it, you're gonna right click on it. All right, so see we have the, the line here. I'm gonna put some cones down, the white cone. I'm gonna put it on the spline, all right? And the way to check if it's on the spline is we can use the brackets to move it along the spline. You see that? It's the bracket keys. All right, so I'm gonna click on it. 
I'm gonna go to spline spacing. I'm gonna make it, let's do 0.8. I kind of like that for my uh, cone spacing, 0.8. Click on the cone, control A. That's gonna copy it along the entire spline, right? Spaced out to 0.8 meters. All right, so that now, now you guys can kind of see why I have multiple uh, nodes out there. So now we can click on these nodes and kind of move them along. And what you'll notice is that it's gonna distort the cone spacing a little bit, so we might have to go in and tweak them. Um, let's just move this one out. So you just want to kind of play around and just make sure the line looks like the right line and looks nice and, and uh, proportionate. All right, so what I might do is come in and delete the cones and re-put them back down now that the spline's kind of lined up. But I think it looks fine in this case. All right, so let's do that again. So we go to spline, tools, click on the spline. Now we're gonna come through the dive gate. Go through this gate here. And we're gonna put one right there as we come into this gate. And we've got our little slalom here. So usually I'll do like two nodes and then over and then two nodes. All right, and what I like to do is put the nodes kind of like right inside the gate and that'll ensure that your, your race line is pretty accurate with the cones. All right, and then we're gonna come around back side of this guy. All right, double right click to exit the spline. Go to the cones, put it on the spline line. It's kind of hard to see, but it's, it's there. Um, and then we're gonna right click on the spline, go to spacing, put 0.8 in there, and then hit Control A, right? It's starting to look like a racetrack. All right, so now this this line this looks okay here. It's not the worst. Um, this looks a little bit off too far off there, so there we go. Alright, that looks good. So come up there, and then we come through here. Through this guy. And just be careful when you're placing splines down over around like objects like trees that you don't actually put it in the tree. Just make sure it's at ground level. See how that line got a little off center? Let's try to make fix that real quick. Just grab these nodes. Okay, that'll work. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here to this little drop gate. I probably should have just extended that one a little bit longer, but it's okay. So we're clicking. Click, come around back of this, click, left click, left click, left click, double right click. Okay, point eight. All right. So now let's uh, put some uh, spectator cameras down. If you guys are gonna be running this for live events. It's always a good idea to put some spectator cams down. The, the environments do have uh, default spec cams, but it's kind of fun to uh, put your own cameras down. So there's a couple options here. We have this tracking camera. This will track the drones. Whichever player you're highlighted on, it'll track them around the, around the course. Or we have the static kind of GoPro field camera. So this one's really cool for, um, I like to scale them up just so I can see them easier. The scaling doesn't affect the uh, performance of them. I like to put these kind of on the start line so you get that really cool like start start shot. 
So that'll be camera one. All right. And this will be camera two. We'll get something over here like this. All right. So you can, and don't worry about which way this is facing. It's not going to matter. It's it's going to track 360, whichever quad you're selected on. So it'll it'll do its rotation automatically. All right. So don't worry, it can be facing away from the track, honestly, and it won't matter. All right, so there's camera two. This will be camera three over here. So we'll get this back side of the track covered. And then maybe camera over here, camera four, a little higher up. All right, so F9. Now to check out your spectator cameras, we're gonna hit S on the keyboard. All right, there's our GoPro camera. That's camera zero. Camera one's over here. Camera two. Now they're not, they're not looking at the track right now because no one's flying it. Here, if I start the race, you'll see. There we go. Now it's now it's watching me on the start grid. One, two, three. All right. So to get back into uh, FPV, I'm gonna hit F. And let's fly this track one more time and uh, make sure everything looks good with the cones. The cones are definitely going to help pilots navigate your track. So take that extra little bit of time to put them down if you can. All right, so now what we can do is we can kind of go around and um, check the spawn points. So the sim has an actually an automatic way to do that for you, so you don't have to go around crashing through every gate, um, which I end up doing <laughs> anyways. But um, here we go. Let's see. Let's. I just want to make these cones look a little better. All right. So to check, oops, that's not. Okay. It's not the node. Make sure you're highlighting the actual node and not a cone. There we go. Control Z works for anything except for when you delete an object. So be careful with that. If you delete an object, you cannot undo it. Um, one thing, other thing to note with the splines is when you go back and forth between the editor, you'll notice your computer will start slowing down a little bit when they have a bunch of splines on there. So I'll just hit Shift H, and that'll hide the splines while I'm while I'm uh, editing. If you need to edit the splines again, you say Shift H and it'll bring them back up. All right. Um, okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is check the spawn points. So we're gonna go over here to the check button. It's gonna ask you to overwrite the track. Yes. Now it's gonna go through and check all the spawn points and report back. No issues found. All right, so let's... um. I'm just going to change the time of day a little bit here, get a little better lighting. And that is the basics of uh, Velocidrone map making. So hopefully you guys learned um, a few things here. There's obviously a lot more we can go into uh, in later tutorials with um, all these different objects. Um, there's just thousands of objects in this sim. Got the sci-fi pack that just came out. Uh, we got tons of buildings. We got the abandoned section that we can basically build a whole abandoned <laughs> warehouse if we wanted to. So um, tons of options in here. This was just kind of the basics of how to get like a nice racetrack um, built quickly. We just did that in an hour exactly. So we're gonna go back to the main menu and I'll show you guys how to upload that track so that you and your friends can race it. So we'll just go back into the track editor for your track and then you just want to upload that and you can uh, choose what best describes your track. For this one it would probably be any class, beginner, that's a pretty easy track so we'll call that beginner track and then we'll just submit it. And then to find it, to tell your friends how to find it, you just go to download track. They would go to download track. They would type your player name, in my case SFPV. Now I didn't upload that track because it's not done yet. And then they would come in here and you would tell them, hey, NY, 
DFF, what's this? Download and they can race it. All right, well, hope you guys uh, learned some uh, nice tricks and tips. That was, uh, I just wanted to get through the basics and um, not get too deep into the track editor and make it too complicated. Basically, just so you guys have all the tools now to build a very nice uh, competition track. So, um, thank you for joining me in this masterclass and enjoy the uh, New York Drone Film Festival. See you guys.